Okay, fellas, I have real close to one kilogram of material. 998 grams, close enough. I'm gonna throw some flux on this. We're gonna melt that down and pour us an anode. And we're gonna start the electrolysis process again because I do believe that is a very good method of removing the copper from this material. And then um, from that point on, I have some other tricks up my sleeve. The rest of this material that I have, we're going to try another process where we will take this material, turn it into a molten state, and then pump air through it and draw the slag off. And we would keep throwing metal in and keep doing that until we end up with precious metals at the bottom of the crucible that we would then um, continue to refine in that manner. Kind of like cupelling, but on steroids. If you guys striving to get max temp, dry air is absolutely essential. If you've ever watched an air meter before, you'll see that water is spraying through it constantly. So spraying water into a hot fireball definitely cools things down quite a bit. Last thing we want to do is be spitting water into this thing every couple of seconds, and that's what happens when you start running this. We only run this thing for about 15 minutes and we use about a liter of fuel. This is diesel fuel because I wanted to get a little bit hotter than waste oil can get you. Waste oil is not as hot as people say it is. Eight minutes later, let's see how hot we are. All right, now we know that uh, 10 minutes isn't long enough. I'm gonna have to redo that. Very cool though, nonetheless. I wanted to get a picture before it oxidizes really bad. Looks like maybe mostly tin. But we know there's copper in there. So let's throw this back in and we'll do 20 minutes this time really close to a kilogram of metal i'm gonna throw some flux in here we'll do 25 minutes to be safe this time Okay, I only let it run 12 minutes this time because the forge is already preheated and we're coming up on 2,500 degrees, so we're ready. All right, that sucked. My GoPro battery died, so I didn't get to see the pour. But it does look like we got ourselves a anode slab here anyway. We started getting up to about 2,500 degrees. I figured it's time to take it out. I didn't want it to get too much hotter. It sparked like crazy when I dumped the metal. And that's what happens when you get uh, the metal really, really hot. I'm not wearing a fire suit, so. Yeah, that is blistering hot. All right, fellas, here it is. Wanted to show it to you while it's still all shiny. I'm gonna soak it in some water to see how much of this flux will fluff off of there. But uh, that's gonna be our anode. And we're going to remove the copper using electrolysis. And um, 
That seems to be the cheapest way to do that step. You can see here how this stuff's just all oxidized to heck. It's got acid all over it. It's been burnt up. Man, that one's really got some serious tunnel boring going on in there. Very interesting how it just kind of eats the copper out. But I threw these in a crucible and melted them just like that. So there was a lot of slag and crap in there. What I should have done was separated at first in a cone mold, a, um, a rectangular cone mold to get all that slag out of it. When you dump this stuff into a mold, sometimes that slag doesn't have time to rise to the surface. It cooled off too quick. You can see all the gases that were formed bubbling up out of it. So that isn't really all that good. I'm not going to be worried about it this particular time. We'll be okay. Alright, so we're going to take that anode that we made and recommission this machine here. we got to reconfigure it a little bit. We are going to delete the electro winding circuit simply by keeping the pump turned off. That's all we're going to do for that. Um, we will eventually turn the electro winding unit on um, later on in the process. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on turning this anode into anode mud. We're not even really interested in the copper. We just want to get the gold out of that. These are the plates I'm going to be using to pull that off. I'm thinking about just trying it with one plate this time because they say you want, um, for good um, electrotyping, you want a anode that's twice the size as your cathode. But uh, electroforming is another term for that. We're just kind of trying to collect a good copper crystal. So I'm interested to see the effects of anode size. We didn't do that in the last test. So just for the sake of having some extra data to put down in the lab book, we're going to delete one of these plates and just run one plate to see if there's a vast difference or a significant difference in the crystal formation. Unfortunately, this anode is not flat. I might take a grinder to that, smooth it off a little bit. The surface area topology is very important in regards to the um, smoothness of the plating you're going to get. We're not trying to do anything shiny, but we do want a very small crystal grain structure to eliminate the potential for mechanical contamination where contaminants floating in the electrolyte can become lodged in the crystals themselves. So it's a secondary form of contamination, let alone certain metals plating out of solution with the copper. You also have that mechanical copper contamination to worry about. And that is why we are striving to achieve a very smooth, uniform surface. And there are a lot of rules involved in doing that. And one of the rules is you can't have all this pitting on your anode like this. It has to be smooth because these peaks, they act like antennas that laser beam out more copper. And these valleys, they act like a loss of signal altogether. So this shape literally tries to electrotype directly onto your, your cathode. It's uh, not a good situation. However, because our primary goal is to simply harvest some more anode mud to do experiments with, I am going to forego the process of shaving this. Just to kind of uh, illustrate the, um, not doing so. We've got this other smooth one here. This one here is a lot smoother. That's because I used a different flux recipe. I do have all that logged. So you can see this is a far better recipe than this. This was still boiling quite a bit. So that's going to be in the next video. We're probably about a half hour into this thing by now.